Welcome to the era of AI. Hello there and welcome. In this lecture, I would like to show you how you can create your own custom shadows. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Here, you're looking at an example. These are custom shadows that you can actually create yourself and apply to any image. You can see that here is an animation displaying multiple shadows that I've created inside of Photopy. This is extremely simple to do. And of course, when guided through this tutorial, it's going to be even simpler. Now, of course, the only thing that's left is for us to go ahead and practice. Now, you might not see the interest of such a thing right now, but of course, learning to do these things on yourself is extremely better than to just be dependent on the platform's shadows. Because there's a lot of shadows in Canva, and I have to tell you, except for the fact that these shadows are limited. And so if you are trying to achieve something really interesting, kind of like these shadows that we're looking at right now, you will find yourself actually limited to the amount that you can use. And so let's go ahead and create uh, some shadows, right? So without further ado, I'm gonna go to photo. Now, of course, this is the file where I've done all of the work. And if you're asking, how did you achieve such an animation? Well, I created five pages and in each page I put the image. Now this is the first image with no shadow applied to it. This is the image with a shadow applied to it. And I just continuously in every image applied the shadows related to every image. And of course, in between them, I've added a animation by clicking here. The animation is match and move. It has a duration of 0.5 seconds. And I made sure to click on the page and I made sure to set the timing to one second and apply to all images or all pages at, at the same time. And I downloaded this by clicking share, download as a GIF, okay? And download. Now that's if you wanna know how I made that video. Now let's go over and start creating our shadows. First of all, you need to know which shadows you wanna apply and for what image. Now we're gonna stay on topic. Now I'm gonna go ahead and look for someone working on a laptop, right? Working on a laptop and what we want to do is we want to apply those those shadows to make it seem like he's working on a laptop and actually that laptop is in front of a window for instance we have this particular video right over here and it looks really interesting except for i'm not sure how this is going to do i would think i would use this one because this one is a side view and people will really uh, notice that probably there's a side view, there's a window she's looking at uh, that would work better. So I'm going to set the image as the background. I'm going to click this image, make sure that I edit the image, adjust, auto adjust, and scroll down, add some more sharpness and some more clarity. Not that much though. And the saturation, some black colors, some white colors, some contrast. And of course, here's the thing. If you go to elements, if you look for window shadow, or window shadow or window light right uh, but if you look for window shadow you'll find something like this and as you can see this is the type of shadow that you can use now you can apply this to the image but again like i said you are limited so how about if you create your own shadows you can test these shadows as much as you like and of course when applying a specific shadow remember that you could actually do this uh, apply the shadow and go over here to the transparency option Start playing with the transparency option a bit. That is if you want to achieve something interesting. Right now here we have a couple more shadows. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna duplicate this. And let me show you that you can create some very interesting shadows. Now we're gonna start with the basics. I'm gonna go to elements down here. And now I can just get rid of the image. And I want you to pick this particular element, which is a shape. Now when you pick a shape, you can actually take this particular shape and put it at the top. And we can do something like this. We can put the shape over here and then here as well until the end. We can duplicate that particular shape and then drag another one down here at the bottom. And also what we can do, we can duplicate. And now let's just rotate this down here by 90 degrees. I'm really enjoying this, by the way. Now let's rotate this back to 90 degrees. And now I'm going to move this uh, shape slightly. Uh, I can select it from here. I'll make sure it's right there. And I can also duplicate it one more time and then drag another one right over here. And what I can do now is I can also click this one at the top, duplicate it. Now this one that's in the middle, I can just reduce its uh, its its size and I can drag it to the center. And I could also duplicate it 
And then also probably rotate this down to 90 degrees. Where is it? 90 degrees. And now this one, I can just place it in the center. And of course, I can keep going. But assuming you just want to create a shadow like this, first of all, let me just uh, select everything, click on the color and change it to black color. It should be precisely black. Now, once we have done this, what I want you to do is to come over here and name this. So for instance, I'm going to name it window shadow. Now the first image has an image already. So I'm going to go and click share download. And I want you to download the second image since that's the one and make sure you set this up to transparent background and then click download. Now, once you've downloaded this, how can we turn this into a frame that we could actually utilize is exactly what you're going to be learning. So going back to photo P, this is photo P. Make sure that you come over here to file and then click open. And once you have opened your file, now this is the file we want to open, which is the, the window shapes. Make sure you open that up. After we open this up, here's what I want you to do. It's very simple steps, but take it slowly. Number one, I want you to click on your control key while clicking on this background. Once you do that, you will see that it kind of selects, right? It kind of makes, makes a selection. So the selection that it makes is actually a pretty good selection, but I want to inverse it. So I want to select, I want it to, to select uh, the inverse elements. I want it to focus more on these little rectangles. So if you want to do that, make sure you go over here to select area, click inverse, and you can see now it has selected those. Once that is done, step number three, now inverse is two. Step number three is just click on add raster mask. It is right here when I'm pointing with my mouse. Click it. Once you have clicked that, it will add a raster mask. If you want to see the raster mask, click here and then click Alt. Click Alt, uh, click Alt and then click. And you can see the raster mask right now. We've applied it. Now, what we need to do right now is I want you to go back into this background. Just click it. Make sure you click Escape to exit the selection. And when you click Escape, go to Edit, click Fill, change the color fill to black, and then go to OK to fill it with black color. Once that is said and done, I want you to go over and then click Filter. All right, so let's just do it again. Filter. Make sure you go over and hover over Blur and then select Gaussian Blur. And when you have selected Gaussian Blur, you can apply a specific type of blur that, depending on what you'd like. Now, uh, it moves automatically to 100. I'm going to have to go back. Um, that's quite uh, discomforting. It did it many times today. I don't know why. Uh, but I'm going to have to go back and click Blur, Gaussian Blur. This shouldn't be 100. It should be a bit less than that. All right. I can click on 25. That, that's not bad. And you can come over here and click, click Alt and click this one to check. And we can see how things are looking right now. I'm going to click control because I see that uh, the filter wasn't perfectly applied. Let me try it again. All right. So now in order to apply that blur, I'm going to click control on this one, right? Uh, this one right here and click control while clicking on it. And once you do that, go over to filter and make sure that you hover down to blur again, click the Gaussian blur, and now it should work. So there's already set to 7.2. I'm going to set it to something a bit bigger. You know, you can see that blur kind of coming in and I'm going to click OK. Once that is said and done, I want you to go over to file, click export as, and let's export this as a PNG with a transparent background. Now you can see that this is what we're going to export now. So we can do it the other way around. So this is the first way. Let's download first. Go back to that project. Now we can get rid of this. Okay, this page, and get rid of it. And you can duplicate this page with the lady in it. And now we can get that particular image. We can drag and drop it. And in order to make changes smoother, well, you can come over here to elements. Let me just uh, get rid of that one. Come over to elements and I want you to look for frame. Since putting a frame on top of it makes it easier for us, we can just drag and drop. I'm gonna put a frame on top of our image. 
and just like so. There we go, put a frame. And there you have it. It should cover the entire design. There it is. And now I can go to uploads and I can drag my particular shadow, just place it in there. And once you place it, you can see the shadow and we can lower the transparency of it. But this is just one of the variations. Now I'm going to duplicate for now and I'm going to go over here and just detach as to keep only the image plus the frame. Now let's go back to photo P for a second and let's close this one for a second and go back and open up the file one more time. Only this time we're not going to inverse anything. Okay, we're going to select, but we're not going to inverse. So here, I'm going to go to that original picture that I've created, this one. I want you to do the same process. So click Control to select. Do not inverse this time. Directly click on Add Raster Mask. Once that is said and done, go over to Filter. Well, before you go over to Filter, click right here on this one, or at this particular frame. And I want you to just unselect, right? Click Escape and click click it and make sure you click edit and let's fill that with black color click OK and now the other one is filled with black color now what I want you to do is I want you to go and click control on the second one click control and make sure that you come over here and click on um, filter blur and then click Gaussian blur and let's apply a small blur yeah, maybe like this click OK now I can click alt to toggle back and forth to see the other image so this is the one here and if I click alt on my first one this is the one we're going to be exporting so if I click on file export as PNG now you'll notice that this is what we'll export we're exporting now and share so this is maybe what you want and go to the Canva project and all we need to do right now is drag the shadow immediately onto the frame because obviously we have that particular frame over there and it's going to place it immediately. Now let's drag it again because this seems to be quite hopeless with Canva. All right, let me place it. And you can see now it kind of creates that, that shadow looking, you know, like, you know, she's looking kind of like from a window. And you can go over and uh, maybe play a little bit with, uh, with this particular shadow, however you like. This is one example of a shadow. Now let's keep duplicating. Let's create one last shadow. Now I'm going to delete that and then go back. So as far as our last shadow, it depends on what you want to create. I'm going to add a blank picture. Now let's say you want to go and maybe find, um, you know, uh, create a, a temp, a shadow, you know, a plant, you know, like a plant or a leaf, you know, leaf, a palm tree leaf. Uh, let's take a palm tree leaf, like one or two or a couple. For example, maybe we can take this one up here and what you can do with it, you can, you can place it right here and then we can duplicate, place another one on this side, but then again, flip horizontally to place it right there. And let's say that this is the kind of shadow you want to apply and maybe you want to go, now there is two here, my bad, let's delete one, only keep one. Now let's take these two and let's say you want, we want to grow them a little bit more. We want to make them a little bit bigger. So I'm going to select them both at, at the same time and make them a bit bigger, kind of like this, but move one here and then bring back the other one over here to the image. And now we have this. So if you want to turn this into a frame, it's also possible. So we can go ahead and just name this as palm, palm tree leaves. And we can go over to share. Now this is number five, so I'm gonna download, but with transparent background, and I'm gonna make sure I select number five. Done. Also download. Okay, perfect. Now that we have this, go back to photo P, make sure you click X to close this. And now you can start all over by going to file and then open. So what we wanna open is obviously the image of the palm tree leaves. Wait a second, double click, and then upload that particular image. Once that's done, make sure you come over here to uh, click here and click control to select. Now you'll notice it actually selects exactly what you want it to select, which is really good. And then what I want you to do is to click add raster mask, in which case it's going to add a raster mask. And you can actually preview it by clicking alt. And this is what you, what you see over here. 
Obviously, this is not the shadow we want to create. It's always inverse. This is not the one we are going to create a shadow for. You'll see uh, it will make a lot of sense. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to click Escape and then click this one here and then go to Edit, Fill. Fill this with a black color. Make sure you search over here. If you don't find, click Custom. If you don't find black color, click Custom and select a black color. Obviously, I can select black color here, so I'm going to click OK. It's going to fill the background with a uh, black color. It's asking me if it, to preserve transparency, but the image is already transparent, so that's pretty good. And now what I want you to do is I want you to click on Alt and select this one and make sure you click Control while selecting. Right, so select, click Control to select everything and then go to Filter and go to hover over to Blur and make sure you click Gaussian Blur and now that you click Gaussian Blur, make sure you just go ahead and blur this a little bit. So, well, not that much. I don't want to add a lot of blur. Maybe about eight will do. All right, and just wait a second and then click OK. Make sure it's about that. And now we added the blur. So now you can just go over here to File. You can click Export As. And we can basically export this as a PNG. All right, perfect. So if we export this as a PNG, it's going to be a PNG. So... Now what we can do is we can just go ahead and click save. And if you wanted to do it the other way around, always use the inverse tool. If you want it to, you, if you want it, uh, uh, the frame to be inversed, inverse it. It's absolutely okay. Now, obviously I wanted to create the effect of palm trees, you know, almost making it feel like palm trees are, are somewhere in the room and uh, there is a shadow reflected. Now if I drag my palm tree image, all I need to do is to drag it and you can see now it kind of creates that palm tree uh, effect. But then again, I could also click on this and go over to transparency and reduce the transparency down to a minimum. And now you can see that, yes, we can see the illusion of the palm tree, except for the fact that uh, we can still see the picture, right? So it looks really interesting. So, and of course, remember that you can combine multiple frames. So for how, how do you do that? So for example, we can come down here and drag this one. Obviously, if you click, uh, if you click on that frame, and and you can put it in the in play in the place of the other one, or instead of the other one. Now, in order to avoid this, here's what you can do: don't move it just by moving the, your mouse. Click Control, and all of a sudden, if I unclick on Control, you can see it goes back. But if I click Control, you can see it kind of just uh, prevents it from taking the frame as a shape. And now, make sure you always click Control and resize it however you like. And the moment you resize it perfectly, you can go come over here and just start playing a bit also with its uh, transparency options or not, depending on what you'd like to achieve. And now we have two frames. One, you know, it looks like a window and there's some uh, stuff, uh, stuff there. And you can also, what you can do, you can click this position backward. And you can see now it kind of looks like, you know, the, these uh, other or the, the leaves are actually on top, right? So again, and you can just play with that. So hopefully you've enjoyed this so far. Now, if you want to create the striped uh, striped effect that I created, it works pretty much the same way, right? Pretty much the same way. Just go and do the steps we've done and you can achieve the same, uh, the same effects. Of course, like I said, Canva contains a lot of effects. Not that we need to go and use these or download them or create them. If you want, for example, you can look for uh, leave or palm tree leaves shadows or you can just look for palm tree leaves and you'll see that there are some shadows for you here that you can use these are ready to use but, but you can create your own and how great is that just just imagine it. imagine you create you're creating your own stuff and like i said if you see an image that you like and you kind of want to create a, a shadow off of it now it's possible right you're not you're no longer limited to what Canva asset, the Canva assets that you have. Plus, now that you're, you've learned this ability to create these types of shadows, you can start selling them on Canva. Just like these people, for example, this one right here, this person, they've created this shadow. Have a look at it. It's a pro element. And whenever someone uses this, that person actually makes a, com a commission, right? So you can sit there, you can create a, a hundred shadows like these off of different things and put them there. And if you're lucky, maybe you can make $0.5 per, per, for every design you have every single month. So that's just, um, of course, an example. Uh, so that's the bottom line. And of course, 
I'll see you in the next video.